Hey everybody, it's the Market Sniper coming at you. Yes, welcome. Um, got a good and interesting show for you today. Uh, going to talk to you about a couple of things. The military industrial complex. Yes. Uh, in fact, we gave you a trade a year ago uh, on generally being long the military industrial complex. Uh, hold your nose trade, stinky, stinky. Uh, and we gave you one particular equity, which I'll be covering shortly, as a long. And we gave you a long short. We actually gave you a short trade on the company that was at the lead of providing the special treatment of March 2020. That was PFE, also known as FIDA. FIDA? FIDA? Oh, don't say it properly. Uh, you don't want the algorithm to pick that up. Pfizer. Uh, to the downside. So we said, go long the one for 100k, go short the other one for 100k. Let's see how you do in a year's time. Um, that was what we're doing. Also, we're going to talk to you about the precious metals and, in fact, why we feel silver could be about ready to do some good stuff. Uh, and generally, that would mean gold too. Uh, but it might actually have a little bit more of the silver surge on it. In fact, the pattern's better, but we'll see. Gold still generally is the leader, but funnily enough, technically, the silver looks a tiny bit better today. So we're going to be doing that. So there's some equities then. I'm going to give you two equities our community are in uh, that you could be in uh, as well. Uh, so you get some trade ideas. That's what we want to do. We want to give you value to make an opportunity to go make some money if you own the trade and accept the outcome for that which you're doing. Um, otherwise, don't, because it's non-advisory, it's fun, it's us talking about what we are doing, um, and it's up to you to decide what you do yourselves. So this was the movie, the movie, Francis Hunt, the movie. Uh, this was the video, let's try again. Uh, in the year ago, it's roughly a year, and I kind of forget about stuff. I tend to turn it out, and I, every now and then I'm looking for something, and I said, didn't we do a video on that? Oh, yes, let's go have a look at the video. We did a video on it. Let's go see. Oh, why? I, I should actually do a follow up on that. Um, and, you know, here we are. Uh, plus, as I mentioned, silver looking good. So I'll finish on the precious metals as well. But let's go and take a look at the particular video and hear what it was we were saying way back then, uh, one full year ago, getting very low love. Oh, dear. Poor old Francie. 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.1, 0 0.8, 0 0.1. Dear me, dear me, the yen and uh, some of these equity trades, sometimes you don't like them. Well, you should because they are real, real movers. So let's go to our movie and see what in fact uh, happened and what was said uh, in an interesting revisit. So first of all, around the 11 minute mark, where were we, where were we? We were talking about uh, Pfizer, that's right. So inside our community, we were anticipating this to be a head and shoulders. And we were getting uh, short in and around these levels. Uh, you'll see them now, but they were the upper 40s after a break through the 50 level in the expectation that Pfizer itself would run through to triggering its neckline, which by the time we did that video, it was actually happening. We were looking at the three day, which is kind of eclectic. It's sort of two thirds of the week or three fifths of the week, 60% of the week, if you want, uh, because then you bank most of it. Uh, and generally people are a tad defensive on Fridays as well. So we, we like that and it gives you a bigger picture and a bigger view. We'll take a look at that. Then in the same video, we said, because we had nice little flying fast plane and the little blue pill, you know what that one's for. Ooh, yeah, we know about that one's for. I, I don't actually, I do not take such things. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, there we go. That's our thumbnail. Very beautifully done. Um, explosions abounding. We've had plenty of those. We'll be talking about that in a bit as well. Uh, we'll take a small uh, news and commercial break as well before we get too deep into the weeds. Uh, so... Uh, here we have uh, the military industrial complex, which was British uh, Aerospace was the one we chose. And that was in and around the 32 mark. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. That was the top of oil. Uh, actually, funny enough, we're passing by that oil getting a bit of a bid right now. It's interesting what was covered there. The spill down there. That was actually the high just short of 130. Uh, that we were calling on a broadening structure and that was a key spill and since then it has been on the downside where is that uh, chart that we want there we go I think we're getting there 
Uh, here it is. So uh, BA Systems, that's on the daily. So we'll take a look at BA Systems. Our triggering event was in and around the 33. By the time we actually spoke to you on this, it had already progressed some. It had, in fact, visited our funnel twice there and there. And it was at the 44 mark. So the suggestion inside the video, go and watch it yourself, by the way, to your old, you're welcome to, uh, was, hey, how about you have 100 grand uh, long on BAE um, and you use that collateral of the 100 grand you put in and you also put on a short on Pfizer, which was in and around uh, the 42 marks. How did they do? A long short, the pharmaceutical industrial complex, yes, and the military industrial complex, two very, very similar tentacles of the same octopus weaponized against humanity, broadly speaking, certainly not in the name of your health, either of them, um, and can cause you great damage uh, generally. So with that said, how did it do? So uh, here are the charts. Let's have a look. So we start with British, uh, American, uh, British aerospace. What am I saying? I'm stumbling around like a drunk. Uh, $69 from that 44, it was the 33 at the trigger, heading for 86.81. 86.81 was the target we provided. This is how it's done. It's approximately a year uh, ago, you were in and around here. This is how you would have done. If you got in at 44, you're virtually 70. So you will have made 26 on your 44. That's about... 60 going on 65 percent if you'd got in with the community at 33 you're almost more than double um and that would be well over a hundred percent so you've either picked up 60 percent as a free viewer on your 100 grand or your 10 grand doesn't matter round number of choice um so you would have made roughly 65% on this. You'll be 65 grand to the good. Your 100 grand would be 165 grand. And you'd use that collateral to also have a $100,000 short position on Pfizer. So how did the Pfizer chart do? Um, and here you go. Here's your update on that. So that was the candle. That literally was the moment. It was very early in 2023. So we can even get that three-day chart. Um, it's on weekly here. Let's go back to three daily in the same way as it was originally. The three daily chart over here as it was breaking. And the break neckline was $42. As I mentioned, you could have been short uh, closer to the $46 uh, dollar mark in our expectation that you were going to spill down there. Uh, so we like to get early. We like to reduce our risk to stops. Um, some of us were in at 47. There was a gap and an interesting bit of price action here. Uh, but nonetheless, had you got in on the free view in and around uh, the 42 level or let's say in the midpoint anywhere along there, I think it traded further down. That was around 24th of February. So we're about a year and two months uh, in. Tad over a year and a month and a half maybe. A uh, little bit of a rally. So you would have got short uh, at 42. So you would have picked up uh, the right of 42,000. You would have got 100 grand selling at 42. And you would say, hey, when am I buying back? The target we provided in that was a macro complex head and shoulder. We teach you how to do that in our community, by the way, uh, and how and why we draw it. Quite a big, big uh, structure. And of course, we weren't natural friends in terms of our feed uh, with that particular corporation. It has to be said for the better part of four or five years in that search, I was seeing me speaking five years ago in 2019 warning of, you know, the thing is likely to come and that it would not be uh, very good for you. Uh, in fact, by the way, had an amazing new community member who insisted, this is a true story, who insisted on buying me and my partner meal, joined our community and paid extra. He paid extra, uh, completely unnecessary. We said, no, no, no. He wanted us to have it, to go have a dinner on him. That's right. He provided an extra $300, which is a great dinner. Some fat, and you could have some magnificent steaks and other indulgences with that and still have some change. Uh, due to the fact that we warned him and on that basis he decided along with his family not to participate 
in that their experimental treatment. Anyway, we, mu we mustn't say too much further on that, otherwise we might run into trouble here. Um, the overall target, 2867. So had you uh, sold at 40, uh, 42,000, uh, you would now be able to buy them back at the target price of 2867. Had you been patient, you actually got a little bit of overperformance. There was a low right down to 25. But as you can see, it hasn't been all so groovy despite the oncology department, that's the cancer department, uh, getting a whole spate of new customers and the new pivot in priorities for the company in question. Um, but uh, we take great glee and delight in the fact that it sold off 228 and had you uh, done that, you would have probably had the 40% loss of, of uh, value there uh, around uh, and you would have also triggered, you would have been able to buy back for 60 grand, the stock that you shorted at about 100. Um, give or take rough numbers, another 40,000 onto for your year. So if you are macro hedge fund manager and that was your sole trade for the year, you put them on, you went surfing for a year, you watched the Market Sniper channel and you went long. BAE, that's right, the British aerospace uh, sh uh, stock that we gave you, you would be 65% to the good, 165,000. You would have already covered your short. There would be some carry costs in uh, shorts, by the way. Uh, so there is, it's not, you know, this is not, I'm not being exact science. Uh, you would have, however, been short, uh, closed that trade in November that you would have put on in February. So it would not even have been on for the full year. You would have been in in February, you would have been out in November and you would have lumped on another 40 grand of profit. Now, imagine if you'd bought the BAE extra top up uh, in November with that additional 40 grand, the original base 100 grand has made you 65,000. So you're on 165,000, you could be on 205 with your 40 grand, but if you'd put that 40 grand into BAE in November, maybe we should have a look to see how you would have done over the last four months. November is here. Okay, somewhere around there you would have paid 54. Let's call it 55. You would now be virtually 70. So you would have made another $15 on your BAE stock from the 55 to the 70. $15, 10% is five and a half. Um, 15 is gonna be another 30%. 30% of 40K, about 12 grand. Let's call it 10. Let's say you made it 50 uh, and you would be there. So instead of 205, you would be at 215,000 for your 100,000 investment. You would have closed your short that you used your collateral of your BAE to go short. You would have no leverage positions. You would have a net valuation of 205. On a 100K valuation, that would represent over 100% to 215. In fact, it's closer to whatever it is. Uh, I'm, I'm all mathsed out. Anyway, so that was a short update on a video that we provided in terms of some equities that could serve you well that were on big time frame payments for big patterns. Most hedge funds, by the way, did not deliver 110%. Uh, for the year and they wouldn't have had anywhere near as much free time as you by the way this trade is still on this trade is still on and we're looking for an 86.81 target to the upside it has been pretty consistent and steady in its upward climbs don't forget we told you after these two uh, revisits some of our community members got in on there and would have been in at 33 uh, on an almost 70 uh, check, but it's been pretty steady with very minor drawdowns in certain places. It was a tiny bit choppy mid-year here. Mid-year is always a dull old period. Uh, sell in May and come back on St. Leger's Day pretty much was peak in the April period. 
and you probably could have got out and if you were really lucky you could have got back in on a, almost a lower point and then ridden it so it was a doldrums during the mid-year but boy once you got back didn't it get started and in fact you traded through the 70 in the most recent highs uh, on the upside so more to come 86 81 still looked for we also ran the ruler over the military industrial complex and, and called it the fu trade it really is a hold your nose trade it is pretty uh it's pretty freaking wild uh personally and a small note by the way go and have a look at what the military industrial complex has been doing check it out i've retweeted this the myth of self-defense with the chosen one nation uh i'm going to just uh play a small amount of this uh, for you to listen to. Let's put it on at, yeah, 1.5. And it is the creation of an apartheid regime even more severe than the one that happened in South Africa. Israel, Israel says it's fighting an existential war, and it has compared what Hamas did to the Holocaust. Half my family dies in the Holocaust. There's no comparison. From a Palestinian perspective, you have to realize that Israel was the lords, the masters of the land. They control all your movements. They control how much you eat. They control who you married. It's the one that decides when to attack. This is a country used to total control over one half of the population, and it lost that control. And it lost that control wildly. I'm Called by, by some of the things. things. For the official American embassy, the apocalyptic is done on an industrial. I'm not going to play it all. You should go watch it. The thing that gets me is when you see the imagery of the other reasons, children. Well, if you can imagine, imagine. Six. children freaking out, being bombed. Uh, by a psychopath nation. Um, that's the military industrial complex. It's a sad fact to actually profit out of that. Uh, I call it, as I say, the hold your nose. It's going to do what it's going to do, whether you're an investor in it or not. And that makes quite a quandary for many people. We want it to go down. We want it to fail. Unfortunately, the people that are in charge are very, very hell bent on making sure it rather does pretty well. Um, and uh, as I say, Lockheed, uh, shorting Pfizer was a lot more fun morally uh, than all of this. You have to decide uh, whether you'll take the profits on uh, offer. Maybe you can use it against um, the uh, industrial complex as it is. But this is how Lockheed Martin has done. Uh, we also have an upside target of 597 for that one as a little bit of a reminder. Um, not as brilliantly, uh, if it's to be frank, February 22, you would have been in at about 396. It's 469. Um, again, that's 100, 400 to 470. So it's okay. It's about 15%, I would say, um, up. There's more to come from it. What else uh, about this industry of death that seems to be so readily available um, to psychopath nations for them to do lead a genocidal charge. Well, uh, this may target, people want to know about HVF method. They want to go, uh, what's so special? Targets, friend. Good targets where the market truly changes. This particular one, BWX Technologies, is actually superior to all the others. You would have been in on the break uh, around the beginning of 23, uh, just before the beginning of 23, uh, actually probably around October, November. You could have got a second chance entry in January of 23 at the same value or slightly less. That value was 57.10 and this is 103. So again, you can see a 90% plus move, uh, which again, if you'd put your 100k in it, would have done exceedingly well. We haven't visited uh, these on uh, YouTube. We only gave you one or two of the ones we were holding, but we had an entire list of military industrial complex. We saw it generally as looking a very, very strong industry. We had upside HVFs here on smaller time frames as well. We're on a weekly there. If I just pivot this to daily, we would have expected overperformance on this fella. And it certainly delivered. And in fact, it kind of wound up again, a little bit imperfectly, but there you go again. Squeezy, squeezy, Japanesey, up, up, up you go. This is, of course, Thales um, in terms of the military industrial complex. Again, you would have been in at 124, now trading 165. Doesn't sound like a lot uh, to pick up uh, 50 or 60, but that's a 50% uh, move 
from 2023 to what is essentially the beginning of 2024. Let me tell you, if you had a portfolio of 50% movers uh, in a year, you're doing exceedingly well. You are bypassing uh, Berkshire Hathaway, uh, all the best hedge funds in overall uh, performance right here, right now. In fact, we may consider in due course inviting family and friends uh, to have such a thing as uh, small money management and if we scale it go a little bit further in due course let us know if you're interested Saab this is another area which we identified the industry broadly to be exceedingly strong and likely to outperform this is Saab by the way it's not just a car maker I'm afraid to say uh, eventually bottoming there. This is such a low volatility, wild, wild move. In fact, the flag break is sub $150. You've hit almost $250 in a very short time. If you go down, that's actually the beginning of 2024. And this brings us to there within three months of that. Now, when we were putting this in, uh, in the list in and around the end of 22, you were actually down here. You were down here in and around the 100 mark and are now at 231. So you're in and around the 100 mark when this video was being posted and we were discussing the military industrial complex in this. This is like being long farmer just before the events of CV19. Um, and as you can, in fact, better, I would say, sadly so, it's better. And I don't think this macro trend is naturally over. But if you're wondering when you're having a tough time and you're now on a double income salary and you're good earners and you're smart and you watch the market sniper to be even smarter and even wiser of the way of the world and you find things kind of tough and there's no spare cash and everything seems so expensive and your money's getting devalued and where's all of the money going and the debt devaluation that uh, keeps getting uh, keeps going on the new issuances and your currency getting devalued and who's getting all this money remember that balloon twisted in half the other half of the balloon is absolutely feasting and it is dark state military industrial complex pharmaceutical industrial complex till recently they are absolutely gorging on status money and your status are captured and sponsored by the likes of the pharmaceutical, the military industrial, and of course, APAC and ADL that are busy clearing an entire nation out of its original landmass um, with women and children being butchered and in hospitals bleeding out of their noses, their eyes and complete trauma. It is an absolute scandal, but that is who we are talking about. And boy, have they feasted. Boy, have they feasted. There's Rayathon there. Um, also, if you have a look at since September 23, they were actually near localized low. Wham! Straight back up to 103 from 68. Uh, that is pretty scary. Northrop Grumman, less spectacular. It wasn't one that we had a, a particular structure in, um, but not doing too terribly. If you look at it on the bigger time frames, uh, have a look at that weekly chart. I'll go to the monthly. You will see how this guy has done in the recent realm. So that is the unsung, true NVIDIAs of this world are sitting right here. Um, they don't get spoken about near as much because it should be an embarrassment. And who are their primary clients? Your government that you pay tax to that still can't run their nation with all the income they get from you on tax, raises debt and devalues your currency. And with that debt raised and your tax receipts goes to these corporations to put the other children that I was showing you in this clip into hospitals. That's how it is. That's how it is. That's the way of the world, my friends. And I mean, everybody says, well, you know, I don't come on here to get a political statement. Um, you know, uh, maybe, maybe you don't. Maybe you should start thinking about some of these things. Anyway, take the profits because somebody else will uh, spend your gains, uh, some of your gains on the people that suffer. Anyway, so that was then. This is now. What have we got for you? Well, um, this is a tanker service. Now it's already moved. 
It's already moved. They had uh, income. I wanted to do this YouTube this morning, um, but it's already moved. It is TK Tankers. This is slightly less controversial than the Hold Your Nose uh, Brigade of the Military Industrial Complex. Uh, but it is certainly uh, in the oil and the shipping and the container movement business, logistics, uh, and these things just go up in price. Uh, it's getting, you know, importing, getting things shipped, values, uh, all the complexity that now exists with the bifurcation of the world, uh, managing oil costs, uh, putting containers on water, the cost of running a boat, um, the big boats is pretty, pretty high. So they came in with really good earnings. That just made it a whole bunch more expensive for you. You could have got in uh, in the 50s. Now you're looking at the low uh, 60s. We're looking for through 70 and potential overperformance to the upside. Not the biggest um, upside mover, but good RRRs. When you, if you got involved, as we typically tend to, a little bit early. This is the cost of actually getting these trades a little bit later. Uh, instead of getting a 9.45 trade, if you were to rush in today, I wouldn't advise that, uh, by the way. Uh, you, the difference between 9.5 and, uh, and 1.37 should be obvious. I would look for a little bit of softness after the results and try to see if you can pick it up a little lower. Maybe if you get it halfway down the candle, uh, you can work in a 2.2. You can close it and leave a little bit on for a bit of further upside uh, if the target is made. So an interesting one, tankers, we think generally, go and have a look. It's a clue. What we've given you is not just an equity, we're also giving you a clue. Go and have a look at other companies in the profile and do some of your own research. See if you're getting similar setups in there. Remember the inflation trade? We've told you about the commodities going up. We've told you about gold going up. The cost of moving things going up means that the equities engaged in this space are likely to go up too. So what else have we got for you? Uh, Valaris had results today and they were encouraging. This is another HVF structure. And as you can see, surprise, surprise to the upside uh, on the earnings, an additional uh, amount uh, of they were expected to make a loss. And they actually showed up with a profit that might point to some uh, sales. Sometimes that happens when you get such an overshoot on earnings. But revenue was higher than expected by 26 uh, million. They were expected to do 498. They did 525. Fat funnel. So it's got some way to go just before it triggers. It's only considered triggered here. Again, risk reward wise, you could wait for a little pullback maybe and try and see. I would optimize that stop a little bit. Maybe put it under there on the, in the hope that after such good results, it's not coming back. And again, the scope for a little bit of overperformance. You could squeak out a 4.45 uh, and leave a little bit on for maybe a tiny bit more uh, on the upside. So a couple of thoughts for you, uh, Valaris, and of course, uh, the tankers. Then on to silver. Before silver, let's have a, something a little bit lighter than our uh, bloodied babies and dead uh, infants being dragged out of rubble in Gaza, shall we? Let's cheer you up a little. Let's cheer you up a little bit. This one was from Cliff. Just so it happens that many EV drivers must use butt plugs because they're trying to say butt plugs are causing cancer. Uh, it's, not, it's not a habit that I can lay any experience with. Trust me on that one. Uh, however, uh, accounts for the statistically uh, alarming rates. EV drivers, that is you, Tesla man, um, are finding that they are getting disproportionately high, especially if they've been jabbed, which many will have, because why, because why, because I'm doing my bit, um, extremely aggressive colorectal, so rectal, so that is co colons and rectal, that is uh, the point of exit, as you all know, uh, cancers. So sitting on top of, sitting on top of a major EMF, battery uh, with your uh, colorectal pointing down thereon, getting a little bit microwaved and mini newt is turning out not such a great idea. By the way, on this very, very point, we actually have the tool, the tool, the special tool, leans over and grabs a said tool. See that? 
See that? Not really in the light very much, is it? So turning this on, it's going to start making some unpleasant noises. You see? Lots of computer screens, and you wonder why I wear the blue light glasses. Um, mobile masts uh, outside your home, uh, in your bedroom. Make sure your Wi-Fi is unplugged. Consider Faraday cages for devices. By the way, devices that are charging, these things when they charge uh, are putting out ever more EMF. So don't charge by your workspace. Maybe do that overnight for the day. Have them in a Faraday cage. Keep them out of your bedroom couple of other top tips I'd just like to drop. I know it's not what you come for, but I want to keep you healthy. I want to keep you safe and I want to keep you building your wealth in reset season. And I'm afraid to say when you see this humor aside, uh, which Mr. Hyde seems to have brought butt plugs into it all, um, two oncologists were freaking out about this uh, and wanted an anti-cancer protocol. They don't teach doctors about nutrition, apparently, he says. Um, yeah, well, he knew they knew well enough not to talk to other doctors, as some people have said. Um, and that's part and parcel of where we're at nowadays. Um, you don't go for real medicine uh, to doctors. You go for pharmaceutical, uh, chemi petrochemical non-cures that will actually have more knock-on effects uh, than any lo anything long term. So the real cures are found outside in a healthy lifestyle. By the way, I also wear um, gold and EMF uh, retraction. Put your crystal stones and put this, uh, this is pink gold, put good metals. Another reason to talk precious metals, get your own chains, put them here, bounce things away, bounce the, with rocks uh, away, crystals, and uh, what's the other guy? It's something I, uh, it's one of you. In the comments below, what's the, the thing I'm trying to say? Chungite, some, one of those. Uh, get some of that as well uh, to keep yourself out of the EMF uh, network, which clearly appears to be giving Tesla man a pain in the ass of the deadly variety. Hmm. Moving on, moving on from such interesting to topics. We promised you silver. Let's talk it. Uh, but I'm going to throw in one other. This came from our community, guys. Well done to the community. Not quite fully ready yet, I would say. Could make a little bit of a higher high here for a bit. But Silver Bow Resources, also in oil and gas area, that's a big min, uh, mover. If you're prepared to give this one possibly 18 months, meaning that it might go up and over, in other words, up a little bit and then come back down and then base out and then only really start, um, in the end, we expect it to do 84 and currently trading 34. Now, that's not half bad and it's probably worth an 18 month buy and hold. So why don't you have a look at Silver Bow? It's something we'll consider non-advisory. Nothing here is advisory. We could get it wrong. This is inflation times. This is oil, gas. Uh, you know, all the good stuff, the commodities that are going to largely do pretty well in this inflation environment where all your currencies are currently devaluing just relative to each other. Some are devaluing less so. Debt is devaluing because they keep proliferating more of it. And the other half, the twin sister to the currency, the fiat, is the debt. So you can be America and push rates up and brag about how strong your currency is. But at the same time, you're pushing your debt valuation down. That's why these dollar maxis scare me a little bit, uh, because they're actually bragging about having the, the, the greatest loss in debt valuation when they tell you how strong the dollar is. Uh, in actual fact, the peso has been stronger than the dollar over the last three years, by the way. We should maybe just cover this because there's a bit of uh, weirdness going on in other influences. Let's just stick this one up uh, for a little bit. Uh, where do we go? Where do we go? We're going to cover the dollar in a minute. Let's go here and put it on. This is USDMXN. And of course, there's also the Swiss franc and then there's gold itself. This is USD MXN. We take it to the weekly time frame. And since this absolute high of 25, um, it's a bit weird for me to see people saying, well, if you were living in Japan, you should have sold the yen, bought the dollar. And in actual fact, you wouldn't have even had inflation. You would have had deflation because 
your cost of living would have gone down because the appreciation of the dollar to the yen is more than the inflation in Japan. Well, that's kind of interesting. We've got to remember that for three or four decades before that, the yen was a lot uh, lower uh, uh, to the dollar and continued to strengthen for four decades. So it's all very well and good choosing 2012, the turning point uh, for the yen and its absolute low and the return to quantitative easing once they shoehorned a new prime minister post the earthquakes of Fukushima. But you should have also then, if we're going to do that, you should have dumped all your dollars for pesos. You could have got 25 pesos and today, uh, or at their low, they're at around 16 pesos. Imagine how much cheaper if everything that cost you $25 now cost you $16 because you are sitting in pesos. Imagine I said every American should have dumped their dollars for pesos. Well, that's what's going on. Part, of course, by the friend shoring nearby and China being a conduit. So they all go, and the Chinese currency is so weak. Well, they're doing all the manufacturing in Mexico and the Mexican currency ain't so weak. Uh, so there's a little bit of um, currency nationalism out there. There is no great winner in the currency gains. And for everyone that is doing less bad, go look at their debt market at five and a half percent uh, rates. Uh, the, del the treasury bills are one of the worst categories of uh, debt that have deflated the most. The Japanese holding it at 0.1 have actually maintained largely the value. Of course, they're all manipulating. Of course, they're all holding up. But in the end, both will go down and both are staircasing down. One may try to hold their debt up forever and take the knock on the currency. That's Japan. The other might do the exact opposite and allow 5.5% and watch their debt devalue and say, look how strong my currency is and how weak their debt is. No one who is a big dollar bull talks about the devaluation of American debt when that happens. Um, anyway, so that little minor uh, grudge, <laughs> that little minor point on what I'm hearing and seeing uh, dealt with. The dollar also hasn't been that great against the peso. Uh, my apologies, we've spoken about the peso, the Swiss franc, generally, over the last uh, duration, although less so today. So if we have a look at it over the monthly time frame, in actual fact, the dollar is not the monthly, not the eight hourly, is probably setting up for some form of a collapse against the Swiss franc has largely been trading very much down against the Swiss franc. In 2006, you could have got 1.3 francs and today you get 90 cents. So the franc has gone from being 30% less strong than the dollar to actually being 10% more strong than the dollar uh, in between all of that. So we've got to be a little bit careful about um, the nationalists and the, the pride of currency brigade. They don't talk about the other side of that uh, when it comes to rates. Look at this. I mean, in 2000. We are all largely born then. There's not too many of you that are 24 and younger. If you're 24 and younger, hit the like sign. You are an elite person. You are getting the best wisdom early in life. You deserve to be a star. You're going to be rich someday, my man, um, as are all of you. But, you know, you, uh, these guys that are under 24, they're big. By the way, you're at 1.8. So uh, it took uh, $1 got you 180 franc. You're now half. 24, year old, 24 years later, the dollar is half to the Swiss franc. Think about that, half, and has actually traded 70 cents at one point. Um, so, you know, bear these things in mind. Time for the metals. You've been waiting for the metals. By the way, if you're getting some value out of this, uh, there's something that's good that you liked uh, and you want to uh, say thank you, we appreciate it. Hit a like and give us one share. That's the only time I'll ask. Um, so let's go into the silver. Precious metals fans, come on now. Come on now, you sound money. I see you there. Put Stick your chin out, mate. We're here for that. <laughs> We're here for the good stuff. We're here for the sound money. Um, so... Uh, we are on about two hours, the two hourly, we're puffing our chests up. Can it be now? 
Can it be that the dollar index might actually be a slowing? Let's just take a little look first and we'll come back to that silver chart. So we've lost a, an critically important line. I don't know who took it off. There's the little gnomes are taking my lines off my chart. Uh, there we go. It was red and it was broken on the non-farm payrolls. I actually made this point uh, with my community earlier on today when we were uh, discussing this one in our updates for the guys for the day. What's really interesting, so non-farm payrolls that passed, for those of you that didn't join us on our live trading day for one of the most important numbers coming in and got the direction and the feel of where we stand on many things um, and some great trades potentially, we uh, had a little look at the non-farm pairs, done it nice and big for you, and it was one of the worst set of numbers. You have three, three measurements that come out, three data points, and typically you get this mixed bag of some good, some flat, some up. This was an epic fail on a number of fronts. So, and you might think 0.1 isn't a lot. 0.1 is a lot. Times that by 350 million people and tell me it ain't a lot. 0.1 drop. Average hourly earnings. To be clear, good friends, gentry of the world watching right here and now with the man in his uh, velvet coat. 0.2 times by 12 means your wages going up 2.4%. That's in an environment where debt is at 5.5% and is in real terms to a true inflation chronically losing value. So 5.5 is going backwards. Yes, Buffett's sitting with 180 plus billion there because he doesn't want to take the 20, 30, 40% crash in equities. That's probably not too far away. Um, and as a result, he's resigned himself to get a shitty yield uh, and for his cash to actually lose money just at a less rapid rate. The true inflation, according to shadow stats on the 1980 measure, is in and around 12.5%. Um, so that means that debt is actually devaluing and the yield on it is ensuring that you devalue at a compounded rate of around 7% a year. So if you're earning 2.4, this is the stag nation part of hyper stagflation. Um, in other words, it's big on the you going backwards side. Oh, nominal number go up until you go to the grocery store, until you buy a new car, until you do anything. Then you realize, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I've never felt poorer uh, on this paycheck. Even though I went up 2.4%, I got a nice earnings. You've done a great job. We are going to give you 2.4% increase in your salary. Isn't that lovely in an environment where a monkey on a grease pole is slipping down at probably 15% uh, for most of the watchers on this channel. Uh, Non-farm employment change, the number was lower, 175 to 238. The unemployment rate actually climbed again, 0.1% times that for three, by 350 million and see how many people suddenly became more unemployed. Uh, the birth death model makes this number always a little bit of sketchy, but it's still an undershoot. So three misses. And the amazing thing to me is that Powell probably started preparing you for that up top here. So the non-farm payroll, by the time we did it on Friday, this had already begun slipping. By the time the number come, it had already broken. So in actual fact, it started crashing from there right the way down, found a temporary support on the 105.5, more on that in a moment, a uh, little bit of a flag, and then smashed down to the, the bagel here on our broadening structure. And then when the payroll number came out, which was already about there, it literally dipped and came most of the way back up. So people who traded the number and put it on as soon as it came out and said, short the dollar, short the dollar, yeah, yeah, yeah would have gone down and watched it come all the way back and washed them out. And in fact, the bulk of the move had already happened from there down to here before the number was even out. Now, yes, you could say some of that was Powell who became a little more dovish, a little bit more dovish when he was speaking um, on interest rates, when he was holding the interest rates uh, and indicating that 
more likely to be a cut. He's not, he's, he doesn't see more hikes. He doesn't see more hikes. So that was seen as more dovish and of course down, 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 down and into the non-farm payroll. But since then, we have rallied back and we're at this 105 number, which is a little bit of a catchment area. You see, a little bit up, shooting stars, suggesting a little bit tired, a little bit down, hammer. That's what we call kettle drumsticks, like that. Two lumps uh, and two wicks in the opposite direction. It's not actually necessarily a top that a shooting star implies because it's followed up immediately by a hammer. It's often a range defining event. It's like the tunnel. You feel the top and you feel where the floor is and you're walking like this in the tunnel. The tunnel and the funnel, the funnel of love, the tunnel of love. That is it, the squeeze. And it's all on that 105.5 that we'd identified as short on this broadening structure that implied a breakdown, which is why we actually felt Bitcoin might turn. And of course, the precious metals. So this brings us back to silver, which is what you've been patiently waiting for. But we needed to discuss this. We needed to discuss this because we're not too clear what's going to happen there. It's kind of getting um, a little bit soft and suggesting a pullback. But then again, it's not crashing out there too fast. You see, it's not really full on dollar weakness at all. There's other currencies that are weak and you're going to have to wait later on the week before we tell you about them. One that wants to compete with the Japanese yen for being weak uh, and a very interesting nation in of itself and one you will all know. So here's where our silver is. And this is the question that we find ourselves asking. Um, 27 point. Uh, seven is an interesting level for us. We determined that's quite possibly a little bit of a neckline. It was the point when you began grinding here. From there, you then got an extreme broadening structure, a bit of a blow off that got slammed. You started to tighten uh, and that got slammed again. Slam and slam. First wave of selling, second wave of selling, third wave of selling. We typically look for waves of selling in batches of three and then we think it's largely done. And it's especially nice if the wave of selling in the final move is the least damaging in the move. And so it was. And so it was. There was a bit of churn and chop that followed afterwards. So three strikes. Go have a look at your USD JPY. Again, three strikes of selling. But I see it going and turning to go higher. Let's have a look at it over here. No, 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 no. Let's put it on here. Let's put it on here. USD JPY, the three waves of selling. So we're trying to give you value. Waves and pushbacks often come in that manner. So let's clean our face here and talk about the reinflation. So we've been taking upside on a shoot and scoot basis profits out of the reflation of the USD JPY. We were talking about the three waves of selling. This is of course intervention as you would say, particularly on liquid, uh, illiquid markets at illiquid moments. It's a bit like the gold silver ratio or the better the silver markets when not for profit selling takes place. Um, funny in a capitalist world to do not-for-profit selling, you'd think people would want the highest price for their silver. Again, waves of selling one and two and three. Uh, this is probably the most violent, although this was also pretty violent and was over kind of quick. You got a reflation, you got a spike rally there, and that would have been some people covering some shorts potentially. Uh, of course, every hedge fund is now short the yen, so they want to flush out the liquidators. They don't want an unruly, uncontrolled ascent on the yen, even though everybody has finally worked out what's going on in the yen. Our least watched videos that nobody wants to know. That's been the easiest, best, safest way to make money. That's right, shorting the yen. Been giving that to you for the last three and a half years. Don't forget, hit us a like. Start liking the, the videos you hate uh, and you could find yourself on the right side of very interesting moments. So this has been a good reflation and a big up. The key thing is the three rounds of selling. So I show you that in a totally different market. So we were looking at the silver and I was highlighting again. This is what we call the slap in the face. It's normally the first round of selling. Your rally then gives you often an inverted HVF in the new direction to the downside. That turned out to be the case. 
There is an inverted HVF in there for all to enjoy. It's going to be a difficult draw because it's a touch uh, complex, but it did make its target to the downside, down, 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 probably out there. Bear flag, not as intense as a squeezy, squeezy inverted HVF, more of a channel. So the final selling wave that you ended up getting over here was probably the least violent. You walk it out, a little bit of last minute, post earthquake tremors and now since then you've retraced to our key level at around 27.72 and that then asks us has us asked the question at least is this a left shoulder is that a head and do you now have a broadening structure that we expect to have a break on the top side that's the red line which has now occurred and is now bringing you up to the neckline for this to be the final right shoulder written in Greek style like a Spartan. Because we are warriors. We are resisting the great technological Bolshevism that they wish to bring on us all. And as a result, or oh, keep it Greek style shall we? There we go. Head as well there. Uh, fighting the good fight. Um, and this precious metals uh, upside would be most welcome. Where does it go to? Well, it would take you back up to the relatively high areas and sensitive areas where likely it could probably run into another one of these uh, of $29. Uh, so I don't think you run the high in this next move. I think you get up here and then you get sold off again. You get up here and you get sold off again, but maybe less so, not as far down as 26. Uh, and eventually we could end up with a big macro squeeze again, which will catapult us. Remember the gold one on 2000? Did you grab all the available P&L green that that one offered? Time to look at gold. Let's show you the gold market too. So what's the story for uh, gold? Um, we will show you that big setup on 2000 in a minute, but let's just have a look at it. Ah, oh, let's go first to the higher time frames. Come on. There we go. That was the one that you all should have been in but weren't. Because you got a little dip and a little shake out. Squeezy, squeezy in there. Ready, steady, go. What a push it was. What a push it was. Um, that gave us the 2300 as a very interesting level for us. We've now formed, a, uh, we got a bit of squeezing action there, rising wedge. And we've now had a three impulse falling wedge down to the 2300. Don't forget, this was support. 2K was support sometime. Now we're talking about support $300 higher after running 2450 And people say, oh, I don't know about gold. This is against the mighty dollar. It's not against the Mexican peso or the Swiss franc, but it is against the mighty dollar. Uh, and you should see it against the yen. Um, but I think I've shown you that one a few times. So overall, this is the third impulse. Again, one... Greek 2, and this is your messy 3, where you had your basing out over here at the 2-3. You've broken to the upside from that falling wedge, and you are in a typical return move type state. A typical return move type state. After breaking a 3 impulse, one grinding impulse, hard down, another grind, pretty hard down. Remember the 3 sales? The three big moves of selling, the final weakest one, bringing you to that support that was tested on a single candle there. Those are your one selling wave, your two and your three from the high. That was the first warning that I would call a slap in the face. It wasn't a follow through. You carried on grinding up. You failed to make a new high. You broke your basing ascending grind line. HVF theory that you will learn when you book a call on the first link below and see all the analysis we do in all the markets across the markets with multitude of setups on all forms of equities in various industries, commodities, uh, the futures as you might know them, uh, the currencies and much more. So overall we want to see a little bit more out of gold. It's not overwhelmingly beautiful. It's popped out of its fallen wedge. Okay, well done. But I th think we might have the possibility of a little bit of a W bottom there, but it has balked at that level for a little bit. It's around 2335. It's had its pullback there in the flag there. 
and it might just be popping its neck out uh, for now. So it depends a little bit what gold does. Silver, however, is actually doing a little better. That means our gold-silver ratio is also finding its way a little bit back down. So again, back to back, the silver a little better. The silver a little better. Let's just do that. You can see that's a more convincing move. Let's take that away uh, so far. So we'll have to see. Could we see the gold-silver ratio? Do you want me to bring it up? Of course you do. Okay, let's bring it up. Gold-silver ratio for our best people and community of friends on YouTube who are anti genocide anti genocide anti the military industrial complex but will be forced to take the profits if it's going to be there to help build their own security and wealth from this great game that we find ourselves in let's have a look at the gold silver ratio xau xag so here we go again let's just take that fellow right off he's getting in the way um we didn't make a full move to the other side. That's the channel that we've spoken about. This is a consistent pressure, this increasing, basing, ascending grind line. It's a consistent pressure. It's just like someone putting your finger in a vice and every morning he comes in and turns it another half screw. Eventually you're going to wail. You're going to wail like a baby because it doesn't get any easier. It's turned purple. Uh, a pinprick will see a blood spot hit the wall. Uh, it's starting to get deeply uncomfortable and he comes in the next morning and gives the ratchet another turn. And that's what the gold-silver ratio is experiencing right now. Um, most instances when it's come down, there it went for an absolute power shoot. Since here, it never did much more than get to the other side. Up, 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 up. Here, up, up up and then all the way down this time up made the halfway already putting a leg down that doesn't mean it's going to break we need it to come right down to show that and we're going to need to see some dominance out of silver versus gold but it could happen one of these fine days it wasn't there 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 the longer this gets postponed the bigger the collapse the greater the move so i'm okay it'll be whenever it is i'll take it seriously every time it gets to the level that points to let's get an actual value for you there the current bagel level is at about 83 and we're sitting at about 84. It's not got too much more to go before it starts getting it. Eventually, it can't keep making higher highs. The industrial demand for silver, the bullion demand for silver, the relative cheapness of silver to gold. By the way, every gold ounce will get you 83 ounces of silver. My oh my, they don't dig them out the ground like that, my friends. And then there's that manipulation thing. Remember the Japanese holding their bond market up and letting the currency go? And the Americans letting the bond market go and pushing their currency up? Uh, all that skullduggery has been going on for a very long time uh, in the silver market with the not-for-profit selling, the attacks on light liquidity as we demonstrated on the USDJPY. Eventually, eventually, eventually. But until then, who knows? So that is your update on silver. So let's just summarize. You got an equity you might have to sit in. We might make a higher uh, three silver bow resources. We also gave you a tanker, which had already triggered great earnings. I thought maybe if it had a, an off earnings, it would pull back. You'd had a better entry. I'm afraid it's doing too well. Sometimes our setups do too well too soon. Hey, it's a bummer. You've also been shown that you made 65% on uh, return by going long BAE and you would have made approximately 40,000 by shorting at the neckline lows uh, the Pfizer and in actual fact you're one of the best hedge fund managers in the world because you've probably done about 110% on one market sniper video that's right 110% now you do that a couple of years in a row and you'll be smoking okay thank you very much for watching um, and we'll catch you next time. The link below to join the community to book a call to discuss it. 14 days guaranteed back. This is Reset, guys. Talks of escalation on the war front. Potential possibilities yet to be confirmed of military conscription returning for the Germans and 35,000 soldiers being sent. France is sending soldiers to the Ukraine front. They've run out of future mincemeat. They want your sons 
to go into the mincemeat machine so that they can recreate what's going on in Gaza, only somewhere else. And guess what? Military industrial token go up, your currency go down. That's the way of the world. We're here to tell you nothing but the truth and say you are the resistance. We can conquer. You must build your wealth the best way you know how and then use it against the system. We also inside our community have great means for you to get very low in tax, but you have to be prepared ideally to leave your country to do so. Um, you can find out more about that. Book a call um, for our salespeople and mention that our onboarding team. 14 days back, any time, uh, no excuses if uh, for your money back if it's not to your liking. Till next time, we catch you then. Thank you for watching.